Arr, are we pirates? On that, on that, on that bomb. Whoa, okay. Deep down. What's that? Thank you. Yeah, yeah, we got a little more sail up today, that's for sure. What's that? Oh, we were flying, yeah, we just had a tiny bit of sail up and, and we were still doing like five knots. Yeah. Down here too. Right. What's that? What's that? What's that? That's a houseboat. What's that? Houseboat. I think we got some weeds, but I'm just going to scoot your bum over. Raise the build board and then drop it again. What? Yeah. Trying to get the weeds off our bilge board. Oh man. Oh, I not want to go back down, so we'll use the other one. kind of running down Big Rito Lake here. There's Sand Island to the right. Speed 1.7. Yeah, we were doing 2.3 a minute ago. I think we're averaging around two. Uh, I had uh, electronic charts programmed into my cell phone which went dead on like the second day so uh, what we've been doing is just traveling from uh, using the paper charts to find boys and islands and landmarks and uh, we've been finding our way there that way uh, it's gone really well um, so at any rate we were looking for this red green red bifurcation or sorry green red green bifurcation boy because it's our turning point into Portland uh, and we're looking to get some supplies in Portland so here it is Well, here we are, Colonel Bay Island. One of the neat things about uh, this kind of voyaging is uh, the different types of uh, people that you meet. Uh, we've met people enjoying their time on the water out here uh, all kinds of different ways. One of the first questions uh, people seem to ask is how long have you been out for? Um, it's a good conversation starter. 
There's a sea ray, 28 foot sea ray, tied up just in front of me. I was just talking to him, and he said he took, uh, he's taken five days down from uh, Ottawa. Now we're on our way back up. We're only at about, uh, well, that, that, that's moving pretty slow. That's for, that's really enjoying yourself and doing lots of swimming. Uh, because we're not too, too far from Ottawa right now. This morning, we camped with a couple, and I, uh, uh, beside a couple, and I asked them where they started. They were in a 18-foot tripping canoe with uh, two babies, a two-year-old and an infant, and they had started in Port Severn, and they had canal uh, canoed the entire Trent Severn waterway, and were now working their way up the Rideau Canal hundreds hundreds of miles a couple days ago in Jones Falls I met a guy that had uh, trailered his uh, his boat from uh, northern Winnipeg a little 14 foot open boat with a 20 horsepower Johnson and he was doing the same thing he was doing the Rio Canal and the Trent Severn because it was free this year and who else a few days ago we met a couple that was on a McGregor 26 with no mast, and they trailered the boat from Calgary to do the Rideau Canal this year. Uh, so yeah, all kinds of people doing some fairly extended long voyages in this really kind of sheltered water. It's interesting. Cool part about traveling on a boat. Yeah, I like to thicken my soups with uh, quite a bit of rice when I'm uh, out uh, away from uh, facilities like this. There's a few reasons for that. Uh, rice is cheap. Doesn't need to be refrigerated. Um, and uh, it, uh, it it's really good with the little guy, right? Because the little guy has trouble managing spoonfuls of soup uh, on their own but a thicker almost uh, ricey stew he can you know kind of take spoonfuls of and not have it all over the front of him in his life jacket and all over the boat it's just easier for him to eat so that's something to consider I guess if you want to do a lot of soups while you're out thicken it up with some rice works for me I'm just looking at the chart here, trying to plan my next day's sailing. Uh, right now we're here on this island, on this big uh, stretch of open water. Is that big stretch of open water. So what I'm thinking is we can squeeze between this island and this island, out into this channel, sail north with the prevailing wind on our quarter, and then run all the way up through here, up through the Rocky Narrows. Well, at first I wasn't too impressed with uh, Colonel By Island, but it's starting to grow on me. We had a nice, very peaceful night uh, on the island. No cars nearby, no highways, no train tracks. Uh, just a very quiet night. It's basically it's an unserviced island, uh, which is nice. Uh, we might stay here another day, actually. Uh, we'll see. So it was fairly blustery last night, and we had a fairly exposed sleep the night before over on the Narrows. So. Uh, to take some shelter from the wind, we uh, set up our tent behind this old abandoned uh, building. It's an old cottage, big cottage, but it's long ab since abandoned, and it provided lots of shelter from the wind. And 
it's got a tennis court and basketball hoops uh, so that's pretty cool uh, here's a closer look at this uh, abandoned cottage apparently this cottage was uh, owned and built by the guy that owned uh, or started the yellow taxi company in uh, New York City and Chicago but uh, it's been abandoned since I don't know the 70s I think Would have been uh, quite the party spot at one time. Departing Colonel By Island. Just have to find our way through a couple of unmarked channels here. And we'll be on our way to somewhere else, possibly Rideau River Provincial Park. Nice day for a sail. Here we are, I found my channel. Sailing by the lee a little bit. Uh, so I'm hope hopefully don't have to jibe. I guess no big deal if I do.